started off on on defensemen, what first thing I kind of wrote down was just kind of some some maybe some principles or philosophy behind being a, a solid defenseman, or just your general thoughts on the topic to yep. start off. So yep. we'll start there, yep. and then we'll go. So I love working with D. By the way, um, Aaron Ekblad's a pretty good D. Dalton Prout, um, Sergachev, Sergachev, uh, Mike Weber. Um, quite a few guys that have made the NHL, and I, I, I really, really do enjoy working with D. Now, having said that, uh, I like I like doing the skill part of, of D because I find there's a lot that uh, that sometimes don't get touched on until they get much older. Mm-hmm. Um, but having but also having said that, uh, I don't want to complicate it too much for kids either today. Yeah, for sure. So I want to keep it like fairly basic, yeah. and really. When it comes down to the basics, are everything, right? So that's uh, that's number one. I want to keep it fairly basic, but this is this would be my principle for um, for D is when you look at the dots, that's where you need to. That's what you need to take care of. Everything on the inside of that. If you understand that right away, then just like we talked about forward forwards, you don't have to outwork yourself, right? So from a skill standpoint, I think D should be able to obviously be excellent skaters because you've got uh, multi-directional pivoting and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's important. I think that uh, your skating is, um, is, is, has to be not has to be, but I think you're better off being a great skater. I know someone will probably say, yeah, but look at this guy again, it's exception in the rule, but for the most part, if you're a really good skater, that helps out as D. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to be the biggest guy or the smallest guy. As we see in the NHL, there's some smaller D and there's some big, huge D. So that's number one from skating would be huge. And number two, um, being able to pass a puck really well. And that sounds really, really basic, but there's a lot of guys that don't pass the puck really well. And then the next part would be managing the puck and managing what you do without the puck is, is the key thing. So if I go to the board real quick, if you think about this as a D, um, this is what this is what you really have to be aware of inside these dots, okay? Right, and then and then to the posts, right? There's your home plate, right? Lefty, right there. Okay, there's your home plate. So, because we know that if we can, if, as a team, but as a defenseman, if you can keep people outside the dots, and and so if someone's coming down on you, you're a left D. I'm using the lefty here, man. If, if you can keep guys to the outside and they get shots from this area, then it's really, I'm not going to say if they score, it's not your fault. But what I'm saying is that it's not, it's mostly not your fault because that's just, it's a really good shot or a lucky shot or the goalie should make these types of um, saves. So, so that's number one. When, when on the rushes, um, if you can keep guys outside the dots, that would be your priority. So now any, and then if anytime you get in trouble or whatever, if you can kick pucks out, like if you don't know what to do with it, if you can get pucks out instead of in, I mean, that's very simple, but that's, that's your advantage. So that's your first principle. That's what, that's what I would say. Okay. So I, I would say for that example, that the box you just drew, yeah. that would kind of be like managing the ice. That's kind of where you're thinking about your positionally. That's where you're kind of, Okay. Those are your gu- those are your guidelines. That's kind of a way I would say it is managing managing the ice. Well, I, I would say it's like managing your ice without the puck. Right. Okay. Without the puck. Yeah. So as I said, with a forward, is when you what you do without the puck is going to de- de- determine a lot of outcomes, right? Whether you're around the puck more or you're around the puck less. So kids that are all over the place or not in good defensive positions are n- not around the puck nearly as much. So as a defenseman. If you, you know, okay, here's, cause here's the principle, right? We talked as a forward, right? If we just flip the page as a forward, we said, when you're carrying the puck, if you can enter at the dots, why do you enter at the dots or in the closer to center ice? You want to get more to the middle. It's because it gives you more options. If it gives you more options, then obviously you make more plays. If we, we said that if a forward comes down the closer to the wall or to the boards, then you become a lot easier for a defenseman to play you because your options are like if you're a right winger coming down the right side, 
close to the wall. Well, you can't go right anymore because that's the wall unless you want to bank one off, but that's unlikely. So if you flip the page now, if you're defend, defending that, and a lot of players don't know that. Like if you're a defenseman, a lot of forwards don't understand where their best options are, right? So this gives you, this, and this isn't rocket science, but this gives you um, at least maybe you're ahead of his thinking. So by him coming down with speed, and I always said this, right? If if someone comes down on a defenseman with speed on a one-on-one, -on -one, it's your angle that'll deter, you can negate the speed a little bit, or a lot, actually, if you have pretty good speed. So if you get angles and you force someone somewhere to where you want him to go, then you're at the advantage. Okay. Right? Yep. So then if we go to a little bit about the comment you made about managing managing the puck, what does that mean? Like man managing it? What yeah. what is managing the puck? Okay, that, I I would say that's a little bit later on. Want to go later on? Well, no, no. But what it what it just simply means is what I meant by that, and we can go into it after. Is a lot of times people say like, okay, so they get a puck, and let's say everything's per you think you're doing everything perfect. You grab a puck, and what you should do is when you take it out, you should keep it in between the dot and the and the post, so you have options, right? Not against the wall. Okay, so this is just one example I'm giving you. But as you come out, there's maybe they're a re really heavy forecheck and you don't know what to do. So now it's about managing the puck, right? It's not everything works the same. So you'll see a lot of times a D kind of sort of scrambling or two guys coming on him, he doesn't know. So that's where your partner will help or just knowing that if I put a puck in a safe place right now, just like an offensive player, if you throw it behind the net, that creates a little bit of chaos. It's harder to defend behind the net. So it's the same thing for you. If you're managing a puck, maybe it's behind the net. Maybe it's just a real wide pass in an area where your partners are going to be. Maybe it is off the glass, but it's managing the puck. Yeah, managing, managing. Yeah. So that. Always, that's what I mean. You're, you're wanna, you want to, as much as you can, put the puck in a position that's advantageous for your team. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to so, be. So sometimes, like if you watch, like, it, and I think this is especially true. No, I know it's especially true once you get to good junior college pro levels, okay? Youth hockey, it's more like accident because it's not as structured. So if you see, uh, if you see sometimes you'll see a D maybe coming from, coming from, uh, I don't need to think, coming from behind the net, you think he's going to make a rush or a power play and he comes out and then he kind of, kind of curls back and he goes behind his net. That's managing, right? Because he's seeing there's nothing there or oh, there's going to be a line change or you'll see him under pressure and he throws it to the other side and there's like no one there. But then you, you go, well, that wasn't a very good pass, but his D partner or a winger comes up and picks a puck. That was puck management. That wasn't a giveaway or that wasn't a just throwing it to giving your problem to someone else. That was just managing the game. And it wasn't the, a beautiful play, but was safe rather than trying to make a real uh, a hard, uh, you know, hard pass through the middle where it gets intercepted and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Does that, that make, make sense? hundred percent. I just want to be okay. clear about the terminology because it's one of those things, like we said, you know, be better away from the puck. And sometimes I think, because that's something you hear a lot is manage the puck. You need to be, be and that's a, a term like scouts will throw that out, coaches, GMs, whatever, manage the puck. But it's one of those things that can be like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means, you know? So I just want to be clear about just the Just like even of terminology. offensively, right? It's if you get a puck and, 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 and you see, and you want to shoot, but you, you you see nothing but shin pads and the other team's crest in front of you. It's like, maybe that's not your best option. But you could try to make it fancy. And that's what a youth hockey player would do. They'll try to, you know, maybe over stick him or try to get a puck through and it's off a shin pad. Whereas you'll see a pro, they either hang it on or they'll pull it pull it away from someone or they'll throw it soft in a corner or something like that to manage the puck, right? And as a, as a unit, as a team, they kind of understand that more, yeah, right? Because sure. the flow of the game goes certain ways. Yeah.